oh my gosh, it's been forever since I've been in front of a camera. Um, my name is Simone, welcome if you're new, or welcome back if you're not new, I guess. Uh, if it's one thing I'm good at is being consistently inconsistent. Like, that's just how I am. And I think I'm just gonna lean into it instead of trying to force myself out of it, I guess. Because <laughs> every time I try, it's a failure. Anyways, today I have a haul, but I'm not 100% sure how many books I have here. And you're ga you guys are gonna be like, do you not just have a, like a really large haul a couple of months ago? Yes, yes I did. However, um, it was my birthday in March and I got like a 55% in total discount from one of the bookstores here, which is Indigo. And I kind of had some fun, took advantage, I did order a lot of books that are not here because they're pre-orders. Um, hell, as I said, it's 55% off, so I use it to my advantage. So majority of the books I ordered are pre-orders. However, I do have some I did get like in store and online. Um, and the rest will come throughout the year with the pre-orders. But I just thought I'd do a haul before I have too many books. Uh, <laughs> if you look behind me, if, you're not, if, if, it's, if this is not your first time, words <laughs> um it may look a little bit different it's because i have more shelves however i'm not gonna do a reorganization reorganization video like anytime soon just because uh i'm lazy that's what it is anyway this is a long intro that means just be talking for so long so let's get into this video i don't remember what some of these books are about so i will have to like read the back i guess to help me gauge where I'm coming, what these books are about. I'm coming? What the hell? I'm not in my right mind today, it seems, but let's get on with it. So the first thing I have here is the Complete Collection 2 of Orange by Ishigo Tanako. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And I got this actually from Kelsey. Thank you so much, Kelsey. She's one of my, one of my favorite booktubers on YouTube. She is a booktuber, so yeah. Anyway, she got me this absolute stunning collection. I do have the first one, and I have yet to read it. Uh, I don't know what this is about, but I think it's like a friendship type of um, novel. Let me say novel. Manga. And I can't wait to read it now that I have the two collections. I think it's only two complete collections. So I will likely be picking this up this summer because I want to read a lot of the graphic novels. But yeah, here we go. Thank you, Kelsey, so much. And then the next manga I have is I Want to Eat Your Pankiest, the complete manga collection. And this is by Yuri Sumuno. Isn't this pretty? Let me just give this a second to like zoom in. This is so pretty. Like, I'm here for it. This says, a bittersweet romance. In this deeply moving first person story, an introverted high school boy finds his classmate's diary and learns her biggest secret. Yamuchi Sakura, Sakura Sakara is dying from a pancreatic disease and now he's the only person outside her family to know the truth. The last thing the boy wants is to be her friend, but Sakura, cheerful demeanor, and their shared secret draw them together in this heart-rending tale of friendship and mortality. This sounds so cute. This also feels like sounds like it's gonna hurt. And so I have to be careful of when I pick this one up because it seems it's gonna be like very bittersweet, and I have to be in a a certain kind of mood to read bittersweet stories so I do have this and then the last graphic novel I have is Himawari, Himawari House I remember seeing someone on bookstagram talk about this and I was like okay I need to read it I don't know anything really about this is like I think they're friends who are roommates or something this says living in a new country is no walk in the park when No returns to Tokyo to reconnect with her Japanese heritage, she books a year-long stay at the Himawari Share House. There she meets Hujen and Tina, two other girls who, come, who came to Japan to freely forge their own paths. The trio live together, share meals, and even attend the same Japanese language school, which results in them becoming fast friends. But will they be able to hold one another up as, their li as life tests them with new loves, old heartbreaks, and the everyday challenges of being fish out of water? this sounds quite cute and i can't wait to read this like it's it's cute right 
But anyways, those are all the mangas I, and graphic novel that I bought. I don't think, well, I got one gifted, but I don't think I have any more. So we can check out what else I have. Uh, I have so many options. Uh, let's start with the middle grades. So I have A Storm of Sisters by Michelle Harrison. This is the fourth book in this ongoing series. Um, the first book being A Pinch of Magic, which I read in April. So um, I'm not sure what this one is about, but I believe they're all companion novels. I don't think you need to read them in order or anything. Um, but this follow the, the Pinch of Magic follows three sisters who all have a pinch of magic. Um, and that's all I can remember. <laughs> that was really awful, wasn't it? I'm sorry, I just don't remember. Um, but I was like, I like, I figured I would like it, so I got the book anyways, and now that I've read the first book, I definitely want to continue the series. Um, but yeah, I do have A Storm of Sisters by Michelle Harrison. Then another book I have not read, which seems very popular, is Howl's Moving Castle, and this is by Dana Winnie Jones. Dana Win Jones. Why the hell did I say Winnie? Um, but yeah, I know nothing about this. But it's pretty fairly old, I think, and well loved. So I do have it. Can't wait to read it. Then one book I definitely do want to read, thanks to uh, I can't remember her name. Oh crap. Uh, she has a book. YouTube channel what's her name I can't remember her name but she was gushing about when you trap a tiger and I wanted to read it I think she even cried and I was just like okay a book that's gonna make me cry first of all can we just take a look at how cute this cover is anyways it says here when you trap a tiger her story begins listen this isn't like any tiger I've seen in a zoo it's huge as big as our car the orange in its coat seems to glow and the black is, is as dark as moonlight, moonless night. This tiger belongs in one of Hamoni's stories. I lean forward until the seatbelt slides into my skin. The big cat lifts its enormous head and it looks at me and then the tiger raises an eyebrow like it's daring me to do something. I still don't know what this is about but I really want to read it. And then the last book I have here that's middle grade is The Last Constantina. And this gorgeous book, I had no idea this book existed. However, someone on the Citadel, which is Mal's Patreon, had purchased this book and I saw the cover and I was like, I don't even care what it's about. I really want it. So I ordered it and can we just take a second to appreciate the underneath of this book? It's like, it's gorgeous guys. It's freaking gorgeous. I think it is like a sci-fi fantasy magical realism. Um, novel but I don't care <laughs> it's just too pretty I couldn't pass up on it so I really hope I like this when I get to it I want to read middle grade a lot this summer um, it just seems like the right time to me not to say there's a wrong time to read middle grade but yeah I really want to read it then the next set of books I have here um, we're just gonna get into them we have the forest of stolen girls by Jun Her. This is one of the books that I have for this author, but I have not read any of her books yet. This is very much like a historical fiction, I think, and it's one of the reasons I'm drawn to this. This was gifted to me by Yaya, so thank you Yaya so much. I really appreciate it. She gave this to me for my birthday, and I just can't wait to read it. But I hope I like the author because I now have like three books for her, I think, in total, including this one. So here's to hoping I do enjoy this. Um, and I may even read this with an uh, audiobook because I've been liking that a lot lately. Now another book that I have here is Hotel Magnifique and this is by Emily J. Taylor. I have seen this book all over in people's videos for um, books they're anticipating. I think a lot of people describe this book as a bit of Caraval, although I have not read Car Caraval or The Night Circus. It says perfect for fans who love the, those two books so not read any but I like the cover and I really hope I will enjoy it. Then another book I did actually want to read, <laughs> not just I didn't want to read the others, but it's A Magic Steeped in Poison. This is a fantasy, YA fantasy and I think this is about a young girl's mom or dad or parent who was killed or poisoned by tea. 
Um, it says, for Ning, the only thing worse than losing her mother is knowing that it's her own fault. She was the one who unknowingly brewed the poison tea that killed her mother. Okay. The poison tea that now threatens to also take her sister's shoe. When Ning hears of a competition to find the kingdom's greatest Xing Shinong Shi, masters of the ancient and magical art of tea making, she travels to the imperial city to compete. The winner will receive a favor from the princess, which may be Ning's only chance to save her sister's life. But between the backstabbing competitors, the bloody court politics, and a mysterious and handsome boy with a shocking secret, Ning might actually be the one more in danger. Like, this cover, stunning, right? Like, absolutely stunning. I think this is a duology, and the second book actually comes out in August. So I really want to read this before that time period because, hello, complete series. It's not very often like books come out, like a second book comes out for duology in the same year. So I really want to read this. It sounds very interesting and I hope it doesn't disappoint. <laughs> like fingers crossed. Then another book I have here is The Bone Spindle and this is by Leslie Verder. Vetter. Never heard of this author. I don't know if this is a debut or like she has other books, but it says some curses are meant to be broken. And I think this is a queer like female female romance sapphic if I gather from the cover and it's kind of giving me one of those um read like one of those um classic talons classic talons classic tales um and it says here fee is a bookish treasure hunter bookish treasure hunter wait what okay with a knack for ruins and riddles who definitely doesn't believe in true love. Shane is a tough as dirt warrior who likes crackling, who likes cracking, <laughs> crackling, who likes cracking skulls, pretty girls, and doing things her own way. Briar Rose is a prince under a sleeping curse who's been waiting a hundred years for the kiss that will wake him up. I'm not gonna read the rest, but this sounds good. It says, kiss the prince break the curse on the cover. It sounds good. I really want to read this. I don't know if this is a standalone though or if this is a series. Um, I'm hoping it's a standalone but I have a bad feeling it's probably a series. And then another book I have here that is actually YA contemporary I want to believe. I hope. I think it's YA. It's called All My Rage by Saba Tahir. Have yet to read from this author but I have only seen great things about this book and everyone who have seen like reviewed this has said that they've cried so I'm very much scared that it's a very emotional impactful book um not 100% certain what it's about and I don't think I want to know I just know I'm gonna cry and that's all I think anyone needs to know right like if you're gonna cry do you really need to know why you're gonna cry maybe not but if I were you if you're interested please check for triggers then whoa we still got more books to go so I have Three Days of Happiness. This is a Japanese manga novel. I have no idea what this is about, but it says on the back here, 10 years from now, something's gonna happen for us. Something great, and then we'll finally be glad to be alive. Oh, this sounds kind of heavy. And it says on the cover, how much is life truly worth? So this seems like it's going to be very heavy. It's quite short too. I remember purchasing this on my birthday in store and I was like, oh, because I did it for a purchase online to pick up. And I didn't realize it was going to be this tiny um, and it was probably a little bit pricey. Thank goodness for my 55% discount. But yeah, I have that. Then I have some books I, I know for specifically I got as gifts. The one, the first one I have here besides the others I've mentioned is The Never Tilted World. I think this is from Kira, right? It is from Kira. Thank you so much, Kira, for gifting me this book. I actually got an item from one of my Uluma Crate box earlier this year, and it was from the fandom The Never Tilted World. And I was like, oh, well, I want to read that book since the Never Tilted um, fandom item was pretty cool. And it says, a world split between day and night. Generations of twin goddesses have long ruled Aeon until one sister's betrayal split, the world, split their world in two. A great abyss now divides two realms, one cloaked in eternal night, the other scorched beneath an ever-burning sun. Two goddesses' daughters must set out on separate, equally dangerous journeys in hope of healing their broken world, no matter the sacrifice in demands. I think this is a duology, and I just want to give it a try. It doesn't seem like it's quite long. This is what? 481 pages. So yeah, it's not quite long, and hopefully it's a book that I get to this year. 
If not, I won't be butt hurt, but I am interested in reading it. Then another book I have here is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Thank you, Lucy. Yes, Lucy is just like feeding into <laughs> my, you know, smut, loving self. I'm just, it's who I am. This does have an age gap romance. I think this follows a girl who is dating this man's son. However, the relationship is hit a rut, I guess. And there seems to be like an attraction between her and the dad. And I'm just curious to see where this goes. <laughs> um, I don't believe this starts off on any cheating ground. If anything, I think they split up before anything happens. And I want to believe it's also a slow burn. But I heard it's quite steamy. So hopefully I'm not let down by that. Then another book I have is A Perilous Undertaken, and this is a Veronica Speedwell book. This is the second in the series. I have yet to read the first one, but I am trying to get into mysteries, and I've heard only great things. I feel like everyone and their grandparents and their dogs and their cats are reading this, and so I wanted to join the you know the community as well. I wanna I wanna be cool too, so I really want to read this. And I heard um, the main characters. I heard their romance is like pure angst and you guys know how I love angst so I'm here to read this. Then another book I bought for myself is Song of the Ferrera Reigns. I actually was more interested in the second book than this first one here um, but it's a series and so I couldn't just jump into the second book so I'm not 100% sure what this is about however I did get the second book as a gift from Hanani so thank you Hanani for giving me Dance of a Burning Sea. It is absolutely gorgeous. I think this is a trilogy and I can't wait to get to this so that means I have to read the first one <laughs> so I can read the second one but it is what it is. And then another book I think this might be the last book I got gifted from someone and this was from Leanne. Thank you Leanne for giving me a deal with the Elf King. I've been going back and forth and wanted to read this book for a long time. It's by Elise Kov Kova and I have not read it yet. But I've seen like a lot of reviews about this and I think even one of the book boxes did special editions for it. Um, I wasn't really keen on getting the special editions because I really wasn't sure if I was going to like it. So thank you Leanne for gifting this to me so I can give this a chance and if I love this then I can give the rest of the books that are like companion novels I guess um, the same type of you know chance. But yeah. So oh I still have more books to go guys. This is never ending isn't it? So another book I have here is Legends and Latte. This is like a cozy fantasy novel by Travis Baldry. And I actually, the only reason I put this up is because of Erin from Book and Busy. She was like swooning over the author who actually voices a few audiobooks. And this is his first book I want to believe. And I low-key want to hear the audiobook while reading this physically. But I was told it was very much cozy fantasy um very like not light-hearted but just cozy and I've been enjoying that so I'm really hoping I like this and let's look at the cover it's it's pretty much like a somewhat small book but it's cute it's short it's like about 300 pages yeah about 301 pages so it's not too long and I'm always here for cozy reads then the next two books I have here are Duology and it's by Victoria Schwab aka V.E. Schwab and it's This Savage Song and Our Dark Duet. I didn't know about the, these books until someone, I don't know who it was, but it says here, there's no such thing as a safe, there's no such thing as safe in a city full of monsters. August Flynn wants to be human. Kate Harker wants to be rootless. Their souls are in danger. Their city is divided. And Kate and August, the only two who see both sides, are the only ones who can save it. But how do you decide to be a hero or a villain when it's hard to tell which is which? Sounds so interesting. And I'm really hoping I'm not disappointed. I own so many V.E. Schwab books and I have yet to read one. So we're going to change that, okay? We're going to change that. I do have one more book for the same author in this haul, but we'll get to that shortly. And then the next three books I have here is a trilogy and it is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This is the Citadel's book club picks for the next three months. So 
this was March and then we have the European travel for the monstrous gentlewoman for April this is the thickest one out of all of them and then the last but not least we have the sinister mystery of the mesmerizing girls and thankfully this is like well I won't say normal length but somewhat normal and I'm here for it I have yet to read them so I'm already behind on the book club picks but I'll be listening to the audiobooks while physically reading these so I'm not too worried about that and then the last of books that are oh no I'm not last out of books we got more books to go oh okay so the next book I have here is The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Amishout this is the fourth book in the Flumber and Nash series I have only read the first book yes I know and there's a lot of controversy about this book um but I'm not here for what I've heard about the controversy regarding a specific thing that happens I really don't care especially since I've been told it has been hinted in like the early the prior books so I'm just see I'm just here to see if it gives I'm just here to see if it's gonna give me a great time um, but it's also chunky like the rest of the books another book I have is Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey this was one of my pre-orders from last year actually and I already read this so I liked it but not as much as the first book in this companion series it happened one summer which followed the prior the sister and brendan this one follows um hannah and fox and it's a uh, friends to lovers um but it was okay this wasn't the best in my opinion that i've read so far from tessa but it was still cute so i liked it then the next book i have here is a colleen hoover book yes i know I was like, I was looking for one more book to get and this was the only thing I could find. <laughs> I wasn't that interested, but I have November 9. I don't know much about this except two strangers meet on November 9 and they continue to meet every year on the same date. Um, but I don't know why and what happens. So this should be very intriguing. Then another book I have is Electric Idol by Katie Robert. I do have the first book, Neon Gods, but I have not read it yet. Um, I think Neon Gods is a Hades and Persephone retelling, and this one is who? Psyche and Af not Aphrodite. Uh, who is this between? Eros. Psyche and Eros. Don't know much about them, but sounds very, you know, smutty and I'm here for that. I'm here for, I'm here, I'm always here for smut, so. Then the next book I have is On These Black Sands by Vanessa v Resen? Resenen? I'm here butchering her name. This is a very gorgeous book, by the way. Just gonna put that out. This is a very pretty book. This is a fantasy pirate romance, I think. And that's all I can remember. But I don't have a lot of pirate books that are adult so I'm very much happy to have this this may be new adult but whatever it's not YA and I'm here for that then another book I have is the Lila Green doesn't care by Ashley Heron Blake and this is the Illumicrate edition so it has like these sprayed edges and then I don't think there's much under the dust jacket is there no there's nothing under the dust jacket but it is signed by the author thankfully um, this is from the Afterlight uh, Quarterly box. So I do have this and I think this is a sapphic romance and I was told there's no miscommunication trope in this and it's quite funny and cute so can't wait to read this. Then the next two books I have are Duology by Sophie Lark and this is a special edition cover and it's There Are No Saints and There Is No Devil. So these are those books can't wait to read them I think this is like a I don't think it's mafia but it's a dark romance I believe with a stalker who's a killer something along those lines I don't know I don't need to know either and another book I have which is not something I would have easily picked up is lessons in chemistry by Bonnie Garmas and I heard it's like is it like a literary fiction I think but it's very humorous I just remember reading the synopsis and I was like, oh, okay. It's told in a very, it's told in, it's told in probably the 1960s and 
it's not something I would have like easily picked up but the reviews made it seem very intriguing like I've seen people review this and I was like hmm I want to give this a try and it's not very it's not too too long or anything it's like 389 pages so I'm hoping that I like this but I can't tell you what it's about because I don't know I don't know I just know it's historical and I know there's a bit of romance in there but I don't think it's the center of the plot so yeah all right then the next set of books I have are by one of my new favorite authors can you guess who it is Brandon Sanderson. So I got me the box set of Mistborn. So if you didn't know, I had the UK covers, but I sold them to get the floppy paperback of the US edition. So I have the first book, Mistborn, which is also known as The Final Empire. I also have The Well of Ascension. Can we just take a second to appreciate the floppiness of this book? And then the last book in the first era, The Hero of Ages. And it's also quite floppy. I can't wait to read this. I've been on a Brandon Sanderson binge after reading two of his books so far. And I'm here for it. I've been loving him. Absolutely. And I also got um, another book of his, Arcanum Unbounded. This is the UK edition. I got this from Book Depository. And this is a bound up of several... Um, novellas or short stories I guess um, and also for like different Cosmia series it seems I don't know all of them but I'm glad I have it so as I'm continuing to discover his works I will be reading some of the short stories in this I've already read Elantris and I see there's a short story in here for Elantris so I can read it it's the hope of Elantris that's in here and there's a couple others which I'm assuming or around his other series that I have yet to read so can't wait to get to this and then the last book I have for Sanderson is Skyward Flight which is also oops almost hit my face which is also a bound up of three of his novellas and oh guys let me just take a second to appreciate the UK cover but look at this look at the end pages right I, I didn't know it was gonna look like that Anyways, this has Sunreach, Redorn, and Evershore, and I can't wait to read this, because, yeah, and it's quite chunky, by the way. Like, this, I was surprised. Like, I know people were saying that it's thick, but I didn't expect it to be this thick. But it's Sanderson, so why would I say that? And then the last of the books I have are special editions, and these ones I'm actually excited to get to. So the first that I have is the Barkana series, and this is by Laura Tassala. I hope I said that right. And this is the bookish box edition of the book. It's the first one being Rhapsodic. And this is the back. Um, it does have alternate covers. Which I'll show you the dust jacket just now. But this is the front of the book. And then we have the back. And then we also have the side. And then we have the end papers. I don't think there's any, there's no um, artwork like on the chapters, but we do have like, like here, uh, the edges, if it would only show it, but we do have like, stenciled edges, that's the word I'm trying to remember, and underneath the dust jacket, we have this. gorgeous absolutely freaking gorgeous I don't know if I want to keep the original side of the dust jacket on which is the black side or if I want to keep the illustration side but I do like the black and gold so I may keep it this way and then we have the second book which is this a strange hymn and I think there is a short story novella that's included in this one it is pretty thick this is the back same um, stenciled edges on the top and the bottom as a side and then we have the front of the hardcover the side and then the back I really like the embossing and this is the end papers actually quite quite stunning actually and then we have the dust jacket underneath 
So you can wear it on either side. I really do like the look of the second one because you can see like the characters and you can picture them and everything. But I don't know. It's... I don't know. For aesthetic purposes, I think I like the black and gold more. But we shall see how I display it. All of these are signed. I think the first one is hand signed. Oh, I see all of them are hand signed. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. And then we have the last one, a dark harmony, I guess, dark harmony. And basically the same style with a coat on the back. And ooh, I don't know that the hardcover looks like this on the front. But we have the hardcover, the side, the back. I like the quality of the books that like they're using like a luxurious bound up of the book. Oh, got some moons at the top and the bottom. Actually, I just showed you the opposite way, but whatever. And um, the inside is very much mimicking, um, I guess, the cover. I want to assume. No, it's not, but I thought it was. But yeah, I really like this. And the dust jacket also reflects what's on the hardcover. So it's quite pretty. But yes, I don't know if I will be reading these with the like this copy or I'll be reading it physically. I don't know. Because it's so pretty. I don't wanna I, I think I likely will. I likely will just read it. I don't care. Um but it it is a new adult fantasy romance and I heard it's pretty dark. So I don't think it's like Akatar. It more leans towards like the fantasy romance um, Fortuna Swan by another author. Um, but can't wait to read it. Then another book I have is Skin of the Sea and it's the Alcrate edition. I actually love the edges a lot of this and I like the color change. I will insert the original copy of the co original cover of this copy but I like the all crate edition more and if you take off the dust jacket this is what the cover hardcover looks like isn't that stunning and on the inside the end pages look like this it is signed as well um, and I think it's still available for sale on all crates website if you're interested in getting it I wasn't at first interested in the story that much but it seems too gorgeous and then this is the artwork on the dust jacket like stunning i haven't i heard that this story is very ya which in i'm gonna have to keep that in mind when i'm reading it but i heard it is still a great story i'm just not as interested in the story if i'm being honest and more interested in the cover judge all you want but i gotta su support my black authors even if I'm not that much into the story at least it's not like a scary type of story from what I've been told then the next book I have here which is also from Alcrate is Gallant and I really like their edition of this book um I'm not a huge fan of the original cover I'm sorry guys I'm really really not but I am digging this one it's like black spread edges go all around and then we have the front with two houses twirling and then we have the back I don't remember. Ooh, there is. We do have a, a what's it called? The author signature plate, I think. We do have that. And if, ooh, if we take off the cover, there's nothing underneath the dust jacket, but there is embossing on the front. Can't wait. And then we have on the end paper. I don't think it's the same in the front and the back. There is illustrations in the book, but it's also like in the original copies too that's been sold and then it did come with two artwork which is stunning i think these were originally supposed to be in the book but there was a mix-up and so unfortunately that wasn't the case we just got them as prints i would have preferred to have had it in the book though because i'm likely not going to put up the prints and I have not nowhere really to store these but for now I'm gonna keep them in the book because they're pretty and it would have just been nice to have them then another book I have is the Atlas 6 this is a fairy loot edition I actually love the stencil edges I am very happy to say that my sword is straight compared to others I've seen it is just black at the top and the bottom I wasn't sure if I'd like the cover um, color because I didn't like the pictures that much but seeing it in person I'm much a big fan and then we have the embossing here 
this is also stunning look at the end paper pretty like i like the pictures of the characters and there is illustrations throughout the book i know many people um will find that in the hardcover copy not in the original first print which was self-published but like this one oh i was here looking for a picture found one so like we have illustrations like this and yeah i can't wait to read this the second book comes out this year which is fantastic i can't i really can't wait to read it because i heard it's that dark academia and i haven't read a lot of dark academia except night house i think <laughs> it's not the only one i've read so it's good to have another one and night house their sequel is coming out next year i think so if you're a big fan of the night house by leah, leah bardugo you will be excited to hear that Another book I have is The Midnight Girls by Alicia Alicia Jacinka. This is a bookish box edition. This is actually really thin. This is a YA sapphic fantasy. I don't know if it's a romance. It might be a romance. I'm 100% certain. But look at the cover of the front. Like this is gorgeous, is it not? Then you have the side and the back. I am really loving this. I don't know what to call it the material that bookish box uses for their books it's really sturdy this is the end paper i think it's the same in the back as well it is also signed from my knowledge yes it is really pretty and there is also artwork on the dust jacket um i think these two girls are enemies and they're gonna fall for each other I'm not 100% sure, but that's that's what I think it's about, and I'm here for it if that's the case. Then another book I have read, which is a fur edition, is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. I gave it four stars in case you're interested, and can we just take a second to like admire the dragon? Like, isn't it stunning? Like, this is like one of the most gorgeous books I own. This is written by Axie O, and oh, okay, there's nothing on the dust jacket. However, we do have embossing on the hardcover in the front, with the dragon, and then the end pages. Take a look at these gorgeous end pages. This stunning, freaking stunning, and then the back. I feel like it really added to the storytelling, which was very whimsical, and oh my gosh. It wasn't the best, but it was quite fun. There's so much more that she could have done, in my opinion, with this story. But I am very glad I read it. It is a standalone, and I had a great time overall. So I would recommend if you're looking for like some very whimsical um, writing. It was quite, it was quite fun. A little bit underdeveloped in certain some certain aspects, but quite fun. Then the one book I have been anticipating all year is freaking The Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Now I do have the paperback US edition, but this is the very one that came in the March or February box, one to the two. Can we take a look of this at this cover? Like it's so freaking pretty. I really love the color scheme. I was originally gonna get the UK edition, and then yeah, I realized it was gonna be in this box, so yay! Can we take a second to look at the edges? So freaking pretty. I am really, I'm dying for these edges. I will not be reading this copy just because I don't want to, you know, I already have the paperbacks. So I'm just going to read that. And it comes with the um, author letter at the back here. Stunning artwork. And then, you haven't seen anything yet, guys. There's more. There's freaking more. So we have embossing on the hardcover. There we go. And then the end pages. Feral is really killing it with these end pages these days. Like, come on now. I think even though I'm going to be reading the paperback, I'm going to have to keep the hardcover around so I can admire these end pages and see like what scenes they come into play for. There is um, like a rose gold um, font on the side. This being white is a little bit difficult to share if it would focus. But yeah, I can't wait to read this. It's so pretty. And I'm I'm hoping I won't be disappointed. I'm so scared. You know when you anticipate something and you like you want it to be really good. That's how I feel about this book. So fingers crossed. Then the second to last book I have here is 
A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I think this is her first adult book. I could be completely wrong though. Um, this is also very fairy tale-esque, whimsical writing, and I can't wait to read it. It's a duology. The second book comes out later this year. But look at these edges. It's red at the top and the bottom. Um, there is like wrap around foiling on the hardcover. So we have like all of these red roses, I want to call them, or some kind of flower. But it is pretty. And then we have this beautiful end paper. It is the same in the back as well. And I believe it is signed. Yes, it is signed by the author. Can't wait to read this. I've seen all people read this and love it. And after reading Little Thieves and absolutely loving it, I hope I do the same with this one. It also, as I mentioned, has like that whimsical writing style. And I've been really enjoying whims whimsical writing. So if that gives you any <laughs> um, inkling of how I feel about that type of writing, here we go. And the last book I have here, which I may or may not unhaul because I'm going to get a second copy from the book box that hasn't shipped it yet. It's Only a Monster, and this is by Vanessa Len. This is the UK cover. Ferrolute changed the coloring scheme to purple. I'm not sure how I feel exactly about it. Like, I don't hate it, but it's like, it's okay, I guess. I am going to get my US edition of this book, and whichever I prefer more in person is what I'll keep and then sell the other. But there is um, embossing on the front in purple. And then we have a beautiful end paper illustration art. It's so gorgeous. I like whoever artist they use for this. Really pretty. And then we have it signed. I think I may end up keeping this edition if I don't like the US one that much. And then the end paper in the back. And I think this is YA, right? The only thing is I'm scared to read it because I've seen reviews saying that it's not very... Like, I heard it's very insta-love and the characters are not really, um, like, they're very... They lack depth. So, I'm a little bit scared that I may not like it. And it's supposed to be a series, so I really don't want to own two copies of a book that I may not enjoy as much. I did hear, though, that it is very entertaining, so there is that. Yeah, but those are all the books I think I have hauled since my last haul video to now. Um, some of these books, like the Bagrina series, are books I pre-ordered last year, and I, they're only now just coming and they're just being shipped out to me. And I will have other books come in in the next couple of months. However, I am on a book buying ban. I have also reduced my book box subscription, so I will be skipping a few of the boxes um, over the next couple of months because I don't need to have a lot of books anymore. I didn't need to in the beginning, but I feel like my like want to buy more books has been drastically reduced a lot, especially since I just got Hoopla, like access to Hoopla. And so I'm really relying on my ebooks like from Libby and Scribd and Hoopla and KU as well as Kindle Unlimited to that give me access to books either like continuous books and series I have but I don't have the whole series of or if I really really want to read a book I can use one of those resources but yeah this might be um my last haul for a bit I will be getting books but I this is not gonna be a lot over the next couple of months I'll probably do a haul later on in the year like around August September and I'll definitely do a bookshelf tour I want to do one in June if possible and then do one again in December in case I switch things up again because, you know, I am that type of person. Anyways, if there's any books that you're interested in reading or you've read, please let me know down below in the comment section. It is nice to be back and I hope I see you in my next video. Bye!